What's good guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing real well. As this uploads, I am actually back home on the island of Aruba. If you guys didn't know, that's where I was born and raised. That being said, this is episode seven of a 13 part series where I take you through every step of creating a banger nightclub after movie, party video, or recap. So you know that feeling when you're watching one of your favorite content creators videos and you just think to yourself, wow, that just felt right. For me, that's Sam Kohler's videos. Well, today I'm going to make sure that when people watch your videos, they get that exact same feeling. Now, I do want to preface this video by saying that capturing this feeling is a culmination of a handful of techniques that we'll be talking about throughout the series and a very careful selection of which footage you're going to use in your project. Today, we're going to focus on one of the largest components to achieving this feeling, which is continuity and framing. Incorporating these two ideas into your next video is going to help you achieve that video that just leaves the viewer feeling like Wow. We'll start off talking about framing and unfortunately for us in our scenario, filming at nightclubs, concerts, festivals, you usually just get one shot at getting that perfect moment. Everything happens really quick and you either get the shot or you don't. And I mentioned this because it makes framing the subject super difficult. You can't really get too creative with it. So what we end up doing is leaving the subject in the center of the frame for the most part. Jumping inside of Premiere Pro and checking out this video here, we're going to use the rule of thirds, which is a tool that helps us with framing and composition. You've probably seen this on your iPhone. And you'll see that for a majority of shots throughout this video, the subject is in the center of the frame. And this is great for us as editors, as we don't want to have to make the viewer's eyes scan all four corners of the screen to find out where we want them to focus. We just want them looking at the center of the frame, as we can see here. And adding to that, psychologically, being in the center of something conveys importance, which is where exactly we want the audience to be looking at. And we're creating a symmetrical image, which also just makes the brain happy. Now, when you pair keeping the subject in the center of the frame for a couple shots back to back, this starts to create a sense of continuity. And continuity and framing go hand in hand perfectly. Psychologically speaking, this is because we know that the subject is going to be in the center of the frame. And when we do a couple continuous shots back to back, we're starting to understand what to expect, making our brains have to do way less work, making us ultimately want to watch for much longer. Jumping into another project inside of Premiere Pro, we're going to see how I utilize continuity in this kind of video. Here's a great example of continuity that we're using with pull outs and the use of us paying attention to the subject's hand. In this shot, he's spraying champagne. There's a whole bunch going on with his hands then in the next shot we see hands once again and in the third shot we see hands with the subjects blowing a kiss and this shot is pulling outward so if the next shot is not going to be with somebody doing something with their hands and the next shot should be pulling outwards which it is right here pull outwards pull outwards now we can switch it up it gets a little fast paced once again here we take a little quick break from the hands but then we get right back into it. Hands, hands, hands. And then here, I'll get with the drop. In this example here, we're gonna be looking at continuity within people's faces. So we have people's faces in the shot, people's faces, people's faces in the center, people's faces, people's faces. And we're doing this back to back. And just when it gets boring, because we've seen a bunch of the crowd, now we go back to what the DJ's doing. And now we no longer have people's faces. We're looking at a completely different angle of the venue all the way from the back of it. However, just focusing on the subject's faces and keeping them in the center of the frame would make for a video that gets pretty stale and repetitive, just focusing on the audience. So what we can do to switch it up is do a little mix of both people from the audience, then the DJ with the audience in the back, then strictly the audience, then just the DJ, then just the audience again, the DJ interacting with the audience just mixing it up between both. And then you can also go into segments where it's just the DJ for a little bit, like these next couple shots. Have like a little segment of them, DJ, strictly DJ. Then back to the crowd. And then just switch to a couple shots with the crowd. Only crowd. Crowd again. And that just really comes down to having a lot of different shots and making sure you're paying attention to shot variety within your video. In this project here, we'll look at continuity, not just with the subjects and the DJ, but with the transition and camera movements and how having some of those back to back, like a bunch of pullouts, will play into continuity and framing as well. Here we're doing a couple whips back and forth. A bunch of pushing in. Here we're pulling out 
of the frame backwards backwards cool transitional piece <clears throat> whips from left to right going along with the music following along to the beat of the song pushing out so here we see a push in with a spin because of that spin with the push out we can continue a spin in the next couple shots spinning spinning more spinning more spinning and for the rest we just kind of follow movement this is messed up because i missed something here but yeah that's following the beat and here there's just a bunch of continuity with subjects being in the center of the frame and that making it super easy to transition between clips and not having to worry too much about the movement. From these projects, you can really see how there's a delicate balance between doing too much continuity and not having enough. We can avoid this by shooting enough and moving all around the venue to have a lot of shot variety when you get back to the editing room so that your shots are not just standing on the stage looking down at the crowd and looking at the DJ. Being able to move behind the crowd, finding a cool angle on the second floor of the venue, standing on a ladder, maybe standing behind the bar and incorporating something with the bartenders. But we're gonna focus on shot variety more specifically and very detailed in episode 9 of this series. With that being said, you can really see how all these concepts, ideas, and methods all intertwine with one another to create a super cohesive video. I mean, I was just talking about shot variety while talking about continuity and framing, but also mentioning speed ramping and motion blur and all these things that I talked about in the last video. And speaking of continuity, you want to be able to edit to the beat of the song, but not the same instrument the whole time, otherwise it becomes stale and repetitive. So you want to pick different instruments and find out the right amount of continuity between enough of this instrument and adding a new one in and keeping it fresh. That same concept applies with having too many of the same shots back to back. Now, having 13 videos about how to edit a nightclub after movie and talking about all these techniques and methods and principles that we have to keep in mind when editing to make it super cohesive and grab the viewer's attention. This may seem like a lot, but honestly, within a couple months of practicing this and creating a bunch of videos, I can promise you that you'll develop a natural feeling for when editing to the beat is too much or when you should switch up the instrument or if there's too many shots back to back doing this for five six years now i don't even have to think about it anymore and it's honestly a lot more work to try and explain why my thought process is for these shots because in my own head i'm not even explaining it to myself anymore it just feels right and if you do this enough you'll develop that exact same feeling of just getting a hang of it with that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you guys enjoyed episode 7, make sure to check out the rest of the playlist right here. And while you're there, make sure to check out the next episode where I discuss effect that's going to add time to your video. Making you do less work as an editor and adding extra value to your videography pack. That way you can charge a little extra dough. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next video, Thursday, 11am AST. Peace.